vehicle, the cu customer complained of a check engine light and a slight sluggish feel. Uh, after scanning the vehicle, we have a, a diagnostic trouble code for intake manifold, tumble flap, actuator, inaccurate position. So you're going to start by removing the engine cover. And then the air filter box. The issue with the intake manifold is you have a lever that's broken down here that is supposed to spring back when you move that flap. I'll show you a better picture once I get the intake manifold out. I'm going to start by disconnecting the engine side of the harness. The clip just slides out. and then it just pulls out of the rubber feet. Next, I'm gonna disconnect these two connectors and lay everything aside, leaving the computer connected to the car. Next, I'm going to remove the engine computer brackets. There is a plastic clip that just holds this air distribution hose. Just a little ratchet. Next, I'm going to disconnect the engine harness from the intake manifold. You can disconnect it here as well. I'm also going to disconnect the harness from the valve covers so I have room to move the harness around. Then I'm going to disconnect all the electrical connectors to the injectors 
and then the air injection harness. So just so I have more access, I'm also disconnect. I'm going to disconnect the uh, position sensors on the intake manifold. These are a two-stage clip. When they're clipped in, they're down and you cannot release the clip. I use a small flathead screwdriver just to turn it a little bit, it's not to overextend this gray piece. And then when you push down, it allows you to release it from the connector. Those connectors go to? These are for the fuel injectors. Okay. Next, I'm going to disconnect the camshaft position sensors and the camshaft magnets just so I can lay the harness more out of the way. Secondary air switchover valve, just disconnect it electronically. That way you gain more access to the intake manifold. Then I'm going to disconnect. This is the vacuum line for the brake booster. Just swivel it up out of the way. I'm going to I'm going to disconnect the air mass sensor electronically again with that two-stage clip and then remove the whole air mass sensor. I'm going to set it aside. just the intake elbow for the air mass sensor will sit here and this runs into the intake manifold. Next I'm going to pull the engine brackets off.
That's for the engine bracket. If you were to remove the engine, this is just the hook to help remove the engine. Next, I'm just moving the engine harness out of the way so I can access the intake manifold bolts. I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove this line. Which line show it again? The rubber? The air distribution hose. Okay. The hard line connects to the EVAP purge cylinder. I'm going to disconnect the electrical connector that's just attached to the fuel rail. There's a little tab that you just need to push down to release from its lock on the rail. Next I'm going to disconnect the coolant temperature sensor that's just this wire. It runs down underneath the thermostat. I'm going to have to really get my hands in there. And I'm going to disconnect this vacuum line. It runs from the intake manifold to the pressure sensor or a MAP sensor. I will be replacing this vacuum line because they just break apart due to age.
I'm going to disconnect the posi position sensors and magnets on this side of the engine as well. Then I'm going to remove the four bolts, one, two, three, and four. So I can lift the fuel rail with the injectors and lay it aside. That way I do not have to open the fuel system. Now I'm going to blow some parts cleaner, brake clean, and air around each injector to clean everything out. That way dirt does not fall into the engine. I'm just going to remove the fuel rail. No, no, hold on. Say while we're taking a break, you clean all the injectors, dirt, everything, things that you did while I was not recording. After cleaning all the injectors, around the base of all the injectors, so the dirt doesn't fall in, I'm going to slowly and gently pry up the fuel rail with the injectors. side. That way you never open up the fuel system and have to worry about air getting in or spilling gasoline down into the engine. Next I'm just gonna brace the wiring harness out of the way so it doesn't keep falling in. Two more electrical connectors.
Now I'm going to remove all of the bolts holding the intake manifold down. There are four on each side. It's a mirror image on both sides. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, what are you doing with all those bolts? How do you know where they all go? Next, I'm just going to lift the front of the intake manifold so I can access this hose. I'm just gonna cut it because I'm going to replace this vacuum hose with new hose. Once I have the intake manifold up, I'm going to disconnect the throttle body on the back of the intake. So this is what causes issues on the front of the intake manifold. They may also break here or here. Now we'll get the new one. manifold out. I'm going to clean up all the mating surfaces and then I'm going to transfer the uh, throttle body from the old intake manifold to the new manifold. notice when taking it apart someone has come in and siliconed these gaskets in place they don't need silicone they've got these tabs that can hold them in or you can set them on the engine before you set the manifold down I do not recommend sealant on this surface now that I've cleaned up the surface where the manifold sits I set the gaskets down and then I use these studs that I've created they're just longer bolts than than the intake manifold bolts. They're just longer, that way I can set everything down and help me guide, guide it into place. 
without disrupting the gaskets. I've also went ahead and replaced this vacuum line just with a short section of the of new line. I also went ahead and cleaned up the throttle body, making sure to get any buildup around the throttle plate. Uh, cleaned it up and then I attached it to our new intake manifold. I've also just attached new vacuum line to the front and that's what runs to the uh, manifold pressure sensor. So when when the engine wants to change the length of the intake runners on the intake manifold, it sends vacuum to this pod and it will move this. It's easier for me to, to move that, but when it pulls vacuum here, it opens or it, it moves these runners to create a different path inside the manifold. And then at the same time that happens, it will switch these over. These are harder to show you because they are inside the manifold, but it moves more plates inside to create longer runs. And I'm just going to put it back together in reverse order. No, I'm just going to put it back together starting with the throttle actuator. Plugging in the vacuum line. Right, I'm going to make sure that I'm not pinching the gasket anywhere before I tighten anything down. Remove my stud, put in a bolt. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I will tighten these down in a crisscross pattern, starting from the inside and working my way out. Everything is just hand tight at first, and then I'll go back and torque everything properly.
now that I've cleaned and lubricated all the seals, just go ahead and place it. Cleaned and lubricated. And it just pops into place. What do you use for lubrication? I just used silicone spray. You can use a dab of oil if that's what you have. Just put a little bit of oil on the seal. Nothing too thick. You are running out of bolts and nuts. You have no extra ones left. What? You have no extra bolts. No extra bolts. You're not a good mechanic. Threaded or not? All of these holes in the top of the intake manifold are not threaded. So you're creating new threads when you put the bolts back in. What about the actuator? The throttle actuator, those holes had to be threaded as well. Basically self-tapping screws that help create the threads. Now I'm just going to place the harness back where it belongs, remembering to attach that vacuum line to your map sensor. And then I'll just start at one end and plug everything back in. This sensor is easier if you remove the belt. You can, you can see things easier. You can see things better, making it easier to, to plug it in. Now I'm gonna reinstall this, this air hose. That's for purge. 
this hose runs to an oil separator into the back of the manifold and connects to the charcoal canister purge valve. It attaches, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It actually goes into the top of the throttle body, but it's on the manifold side of the throttle plate. Next, I'm going to install the air mass sensor and elbow as one piece. This hose connects to this oil separator. And then I plug it in electronically. This is an oil separator cover. Inside here, there's a centrifuge attached to the camshaft that helps separate the oil from the crankcase air. Then I'm going to attach the brake booster line and that's just a push connect. And secondary air injection pump. And then I will tighten the manifold, or the engine harness and then I will tighten the engine wiring harness down. Now I will install the brackets that hold the engine computer in place. Self-tapping again? All self-tapping. Everything in the intake manifold is self-tapping.
way the engine computer back in place. Reinstall the air box. No extra bolts and nuts. Nothing extra. Good job. And then start your vehicle, erase the check engine light, and retest the intake manifold. Ready? Ready. the computer to it now. Hook up, hook in the computer. I need to hook up the computer. 